Five on your side at 10. Decision 2024 coverage of the Missouri primary. Good evening. I'm Mike Wood. And I'm Kelly Jackson. The polls in the show me say closed just about three hours ago. And the results are pouring in. We have live, we have five live crews spread out across the state from Springfield to Jefferson City and here in St. Louis covering the big races for you tonight. Let's start with a race that's gained national attention. Congresswoman Cori Bush, a progressive member of the squad, being challenged by St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell and former state lawmaker Maria Chappelle Nadal. And as you can see right now, Wesley Bell in front by 10% right now over the incumbent Cori Bush. And Democrats have held this seat for 75 years, meaning tonight's winner will likely go on to win in November. Justina Coronel is at the Congresswoman's watch party downtown. Brent Solomon is live with Wesley Bell supporters. Brent. Good evening to you. We are here at the Wesley Bell watch party and I tell you what it appears One, two, that he two. may have just walked into the building Is this the moment we've been waiting for? everyone here has been waiting uh, we're going to listen in to see what the camp is saying right now so let me get out of the way and show you what St. Louis City St. Louis County we're here I need to see all those signs up high in there I need to see all the signs up high in the air a lot of hard work has been put into this campaign. There have been some non-believers. And then there are the believers. <laughs> All right, so for those of you who might not have a clue who I am, I am <laughs> DJ. <laughs> OK, so DJ Cut. <laughs> All day. All day, so definitely been rocking with Wesley since he was running for council person. And to see this moment right here with all of us together, put some, make some noise for yourselves. Make some noise for yourselves. To hear what he says, early indications show that he has a slight lead tonight. We'll keep you posted. But for now, let's turn it over to my colleague, Justina Cornell, who's watching the Cory Bush watch party. Hey there, Justina. Yeah, so right now we're waiting for Congresswoman Cory Bush, of course, pending those results. St. Louis Mayor Char Jones actually just walked in a couple of minutes ago, went on stage and said she's actually going to sit in the corner and pray. Now, there has been a ton of loud music. We have live performers right now. There's been a lot of dancing. But, of course, that tune changed within the last hour or so as people have been glued to their phone looking at those results. Now the video on your screen is what it looked like inside the venue here in downtown St. Louis tonight with multiple supporters rocking purple for the incumbent congresswoman. Now as people packed the room, many also looked at those results like I mentioned. Well now all the votes are in for now. We're seeing Cori Bush lost support in St. Louis County and St. Louis City. It seemed where she picked up steam but was it enough? Well, we'll learn soon. Now, Bush is a progressive member of the squad in the House, and if she loses, this would be the second member of the squad losing in a primary this year. Now, while she campaigned for her accomplishments of about $2 billion to the first district, she also faced criticism for her rhetoric on Israel, the handling of campaign funds for security services. Now, again, there are live performances happening at this time. Many people are gathered waiting for Congressman Cory Bush. Of course, once we hear more, we'll make sure to update you on KCK.com. Reporting live, Christina Cornell, five on your side. And we do want to let you know that the Associated Press has called the race for Wesley Bell, defeating the incumbent Cori Bush tonight. And in the race for Missouri governor, nine Republicans and five Democrats are hoping to replace Governor Mike Parson, who is not seeking re-election because of term limits. All right, here's the Republican primary. You can see Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe with a substantial lead. Jay Ashcroft did not perform very well. Bill Eigel with 32% of the vote. This is the latest that we have right now, but Mike Kehoe well in front. And the winner will face the winner of tonight's Democratic primary in November. State Representative Crystal Quaid has declared victory over food franchise owner Mike Hamra. Tonight we have Robert Townsend with the Ashcroft supporters in Springfield, Missouri. Megan Kernan is with the Igo campaign in St. Peter's. But let's start with Laura Barczewski 
in Jefferson City. She is with the Kehoe campaign. Laura. Mike and Kelly, it's been a very exciting night, and right now Mike Kehoe is taking the stage. I believe he is claiming victory. His camp has already come in and claimed victory. And I'm going to step out of the way so you can hear exactly First what he's about to, to say. Uh, and I'll get to this more officially. Uh, my family, who are just here with me today, they are rock stars. <laughs> Many of you were here with us at that time. At the time, I told you I wasn't supposed to be standing there. Growing up, no one would have looked at me and said, that, day's, that kid's going to be a lieutenant governor someday. Well, America's a great place, isn't it? Yeah. The son of a single mother from North St. Louis who had to start working when I was 12 to help support his family, that crew, kid grew up to become a businessman, a state senator, a lieutenant governor, and now the winner of the Republican nomination for governor of the great state of Missouri. Yet, here we are, and once again I say, I should not be standing here as your nominee. Fifteen months ago, people said we couldn't win. Our own polling showed us 35 points and an underdog. In fact, just four or five months ago, we were down 35 points. But we believed in our cause, but more importantly, you believed in us. And so many people around Missouri that are here tonight, including our veterans, our firefighters, our policemen, farmers and ranchers, they all believed in us too. So we ignored the naysayers, we traveled the state, we showed up everywhere, we met and listened to tens of thousands of Missourians. And tonight, we show that hard work still pays off. And that what you do is way more important than what you say. And we prove, we prove once again the American dream is still alive. I would not be standing here today without the grace of God and my family. My mom, who is our family's hero, and my siblings, John, Maureen, and Peggy, who are here tonight. Kathy is fighting somebody named Debbie down in the Florida panhandle somewhere. <laughs> my wife, Claudia, she has been an incredible partner on this crazy journey. She has been by my side. She's been by my side every step of the way. Nobody has worked harder. Will she make a great first lady or what? Our four kids, Carol, Michael, Maggie, and Claire, thank you for the sacrifices you have made to help us get here today. And the new guy, our son-in-law, Scott, I'm sure none of you signed up for all the craziness of a campaign. I also have to recognize the Sinclair family. My life would be very different today without the years of their guidance. I've been blessed to have a great team. Thank you to Dick. Hey there, we are back here in the Kehoe camp and he is claiming victory. He's very excited. But let's head over to Robert Townsend, who is in Springfield with the latest on his campaign there with J.I. Hey there, Laura, I can tell you this, right now here in Springfield, the atmosphere is very low key. Jay Ashcroft all but conceding his speech was given right here at this podium here. You see it's empty right now because he walked off about 30 minutes ago with his wife Katie by his side. But again, he was very dismal and very low key, all but congratulating, quote, Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe on his big win tonight. Again, dozens of his supporters su supported him. They were gathering here. His wife, his 82-year-old dad originally was going to be here, but he did not show up. But again, just about 30 minutes ago, Jay Ashcroft delivering his concession speech. Let's listen in. I wish him well. Uh, I, I just, I, I pray that God will bless him, that God will bless him in his time uh, as governor, because I think that's good for the state. And um, I am, I'm thankful that I even got this close. 
Again, Ashcroft pretty much conceding and saying that he was very thankful to participate in the race here. We're going to go now to St. Peter's. That's where my colleague Megan Kernan is. She's with Bill Igo's camp. Hey, Megan, what's up? Hey, Robert. Well, as we were going on the air just about 11 minutes ago, State Senator Bill Eigel did concede in this race. Now, you can see him behind me. He's here shaking hands and hugging some of his supporters. I do have to say the mood really hasn't changed much even after he did concede. It's still full of energy. There's been music and it's still pretty much a full house in here as it's been the entire night. Many people have packed the entire room here. Every table has been full here as his supporters have just been cheering him on. Now, Igel has been, you know, in the steady second place throughout the entire race as the results have trickled in. Igel spent two terms in the Missouri State Senate, often clashing with members of his own party. Now, he ran on a promise to end personal property tax, increase deportations in Missouri, and protect farmland. Now, again, as you can see, it is still a packed house in here. Bill Eichel is still going around and greeting people, thanking them for being here. The entire room here at the Old Hickory Golf Club in St. Peter's has been packed all night. For now, reporting live in St. Peter's, Megan Curtin, Five on Your Side. And the Associated Press has called Mike Kehoe the winner in that race for governor on the GOP side. And within the last 30 minutes, Crystal Quaid celebrated her victory, her Democratic victory, with supporters in Springfield. Tonight's results show us that regardless of party, regardless of where folks live in the state of Missouri, they want something different. Yeah. And in the Democratic primary for U.S. Senate, Marine veteran Lucas Kuntz was declared the winner early with 65% of the vote. Uh, he beat State Senator Carla May. Kuntz spoke to his supporters about an hour ago about taking on Republican incumbent Josh Hawley in November. And it's not because of where he came from. I don't even think it's because of how he grew up. It is because of what he has become. A power-hungry, control-obsessed politician who cares about nothing other than making money in office and deciding how we get to live our lives. On X, Holly offered his congratulations to Kuntz and challenged him to a debate next week at the Missouri State Fair. Now let's get a closer look at tonight's big races. I want to check in with our political editor, Mark Maxwell. Yeah, we're here with also Anita Mannion, our political analyst. Good to have you with us, Anita. Let's check right in on the map, the big race. Everyone in St. Louis, everyone across the country is watching this Democratic primary race between Wesley Bell and Cori Bush. You see here the Associated Press calling Wesley Bell the winner, the clear split between the county where he had a 10,000 vote lead, 99% of the votes counted up 10,000 in the county. In the city, Wesley Bell trailing 4,000 votes. But Anita, you see here that the $7 million in ads that came in from the pro-Israel groups might have moved the needle here. Absolutely. You know, six years ago in August, we were calling a race for this insurgent Wesley Bell who won an upset Democratic primary. But this time he was the well-funded candidate who ran these ads that proved to be effective. Both Wesley Bell and Cori Bush grew to power, grew to local fame after the Ferguson uprising. Now approaching the 10-year anniversary, Cori Bush falls to Wesley Bell. She became the activist outsider, agitator, somebody who made people in power uncomfortable. Wesley Bell took that different path going into power, into a, a prosecutor's role to try to reform the system from the inside out. He now appears in the catbird seat to go on and win uh, in, uh, in November. And we have here again the breakdown. Bill Eigel just really pushing Jay Ashcroft out of that second position. And, and I mean, how, who saw this coming? I didn't, and certainly the Ashcroft campaign didn't. You know, it started out with Ashcroft as the favorite. He had the name recognition, the family legacy, held statewide office, but, you know, Bill Igel out Maggot uh, Ashcroft. And they kind of, even though Trump endorsed all three, these two, I think, kind of split that more conservative vote with Mike Kehoe coming ahead. Anita, thanks for that analysis. We got more of the big board coming later on tonight. Stick with us here. We'll get into some of the other big races 
for now, but Mike and Kelly, for now, back to you. And all of tonight's results will be running at the bottom of your screen. They're also available on KSDK.com. Just text the word results to 314-425-5355, and we'll be happy to send you a link. Coming up, a look at the results from some of the other key races tonight. Plus, bus bedlam tonight. Parents voice their concerns on transportation and leadership issues plaguing St. Louis public schools. And it feels like back to school weather tonight after temperatures tumbled out of the 90s, now in the upper 60s in many places. Much more comfortable weather to end this week.